Okay, in this guide, we're going to look at how we can use Unity and GitHub Desktop to provide version control and backups and project management for our Unity projects. So I've got a Unity example project that's been set up here. Now, unfortunately, we're going to need to move the location of this. So what we are going to do is just go back down to the desktop. So I'm just going to press Windows D to clear everything out. And as we work through, uh, what do we need? So I just actually want to close out of Unity. I'll just make sure everything's saved. I am going to get the Unity Hub, which is doesn't appear to be there. So I'm just going to start and open it up. Okay, there we go. And I'm actually just going to pin that to the taskbar because it's really useful. Okay, and so we can see I've got this, that example project. I just clicked on it, so it's actually going to try and open up, which is not what we want. We actually want to go click on the little dots on the side, the ellipses, go show an explorer, just so I can find where that folder is. Let's just close Unity again. And I'm also going to remove it from the list. Now, note it doesn't actually delete it at this point. So I've just got this project folder. And we're going to end up moving the stuff that's in here. But first, let's go to GitHub Desktop. And we could go and use an existing project folder. So I've actually got one prepared earlier. So example Unity. And so what I could do is go from GitHub into here, take all the contents, copy it, and then paste it all into that folder. And as you can see, there's about 8,000 odd files. It's going to take about a minute, so let's just come back once that's finished. Okay. Okay, so we can now see it's gone and copy those files in and our change history. Actually, out of all of those 8,000 files, there's only 31 that need to be backed up. So let's go and back those up. So we've got our initial unit copy and it is just a basic with cube physics. So we're just describing what's going on. Okay, so we're just going to commit that to the main, push it to the origin. And now if we go show and explore, you can see this file is still there. If we go view on GitHub, hey, there's the assets files, there's all those files that it's decided to up, needed to upload. And it only has the essential files that it needs. The reason being, is this one has this git ignore file which was set to ignore certain parts like the library, temp, object, folder, builds, and so on. Files that it doesn't need that it can rebuild on its own from inside Unity. Okay, so that is one way of using an existing repo. Now, next step, what we'll do is we'll go and create a new repo so I'm in Unity I'm going to go file new repository and we'll call it Unity underscore example new repo and in this one we're going to basically make an entire new repo and new Unity project so we'll initialize it with a readme as we always do to set up the details and tell it we're going to use the Unity git ignore and create that repo. Let's just publish it. Always a good idea to do that first. Just gets a version up online initially. Okay, cool. That has been taken care of. So now we're going to show an explorer and we need to set up our project in this folder. So what we need to do. 
is go back to the Unity Hub and we're going to create yeah check the right version we're going to create a new project 3D and we're going to tell it which folder it needs to go into now what we want to do is make sure that it is inside this existing folder so I'm just going to take that we've got a few other little steps we're going to need to sort of do to get this working nicely so I've got it hey, it's going to go in that folder and we're just going to call this project temp name and we're going to create it and as it works away it'll take a bit of time to start up initially we can see it's made a folder in here called temp name so we're just going to let unity go and set that up and we will just wait okay now we can see the project has been created it's called temp name okay so we're actually just going to close out of it go to that unity project folder maybe you can get to it just from the history now we've got a bunch of different files and it's going to be uploaded okay but note it's actually including the assets folder that's because it's all inside this temp name we need to basically move everything in here back one level so I'm just going to show what would sort of happen okay so remember if we look at our git ignore file you know we've still got all the assets and library and objects and builds and the logs folder a bunch of stuff which we don't want to have included so we're not going to upload straight away what we're going to do is we quit out of unity go into this folder select everything control x to cut it out paste it one folder back and then just delete that temp name folder now we're going to go back into the unity project editor now we need to remove that previous one and now that the previous one has been removed we're going to go and add that folder back in so I'm going to go to the folder and I've got my projects in and I'm going to go unity example new repo and I can see that folder I'm going to hit select folder and then I'm just going to open it up in unity and once again that might take a few minutes but we'll see how it goes and then we now have our unity project that's all opened up if we switch back to github desktop you now see rather than those 31 files so they've got 29 and it's only keeping the ones that it needs now, if we go back into that project folder you know look at that git ignore file file we can see it's you know not taking certain ones if we don't want it to upload any logs we can actually add that in capital L lowercase L inside square brackets OGS and slash so that will mean anything inside the logs folder won't get uploaded you might not want to do this because log files can be quite useful for people tracking out errors and messages that have happened but let's just look at this as an example and now we go back there's now only 28 those files that were in that logs have now been removed okay so let's give it a commit and there are no is an essentially an empty project now we can commit that to the main push it to origin and I've got it set up at that state if we now go back into unity let's go and actually just add some items to this let's make it add a cube let's add a sphere let's add a plane down here let's save those 
we can now see just the scene has been changed so you only ever want to have one person working on each different object at a time because if someone changes the scene and another person changes it you're going to have conflicts let's make an asset let's make a player so let's go create the prefab called player we'll double click to go inside and edit that and we're just going to add a cylinder and a sphere on top and we'll just resize that to 2.25 and let's make it the sphere 1.5 in all directions we'll save that player we can go back up to it and we're going to drag that player on there so now the sample scene should have changed as well as we've got this new asset player so if we back into Visual Studio we've got a player prefab Play prefab meta, which is just some overview, essential information that Unity needs, and our scene. So it's only got three changed, so we'll just, we've added a player, we'll commit that on, push it to origin, and it's stored those changes. Now, if we even need to go and view it on GitHub, we can, we can. See, there are now those three commits. When the different files were changed, we can go in and look at the different data and files that we need. You know, we can copy the contents, we can download them. It gives us a lot of features and ability.